The Straw Harvest Pack by Creative Mesh is back. Take a look with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's Tuesday the 23rd of January and it's here. The Straw Harvest Pack, or what used to be called the Add-on Straw Harvest by Creative Mesh. They said it was coming in January. We were tipped the wink about this um, and it's here today. Um, all platforms, I know a few people had early access to it. Um, this is my console look at it, including slot counts and that kind of thing as well. And there's quite a lot in this pack. So this is a separate mod review in its own right, which is what it deserves. So it's 145.75 megabytes download, as I've already said, by Creative Mesh. It's a brilliant pack with some great features and some nice stuff in here. I'm going to start off with implements, then work through balers, then we'll work through, well, You'll see as we go around, then we're going to buildings and what they'll do. There'll be a couple of little warnings here and there because there's a couple of things I've noticed or found um, in the operation of these buildings and facilities. But with the bale and pallet storage buildings being in FS22 now, that's been added into this as well, which I like, um, especially if you're producing a lot of pallets out of the palletizing building, you might want somewhere to store them. Plus, we've got a heating plant added in as well. Um, as a, a cell, well, cell point, it produces power and it'll produce you income as well. So let's jump in and have a look, shall we? We're going to start off on our tools, and we're going to start off with now. You can go either into bale loaders, which is where you can find them, which is kind of the the first obvious place, I guess. So the uh, Bressel and Lard, we've got the V grab on the left, then we've got the Bressel and Lard B50AR03 and the B50AR. Zero, 05. Slot counts on these are three on each. The V grab, which is your upright version, we can have front loader, telehandler, or wheel loader, and we can change the main colour to anything on that palette. If we go to the B50AR03 now, these are designed to work well, um, anywhere you like. You can use them on field for picking up bales, you can use them for loading or unloading trailers, you can use them for loading or unloading stacks, whatever you want to do. We've had a few of these in game before. I have found the previous versions of these as part of the, the um, straw harvest add on. They're bomb proof. I've never had a problem with bales falling off or anything like that. They, they work really, really well. So, with the AR03, it's designed to do three bales. Depending on our place, you can do four, and depending on the orientation of the bales as well. Um, predominantly for square bales, it will pick up round, but it does prefer square bales. We've got front loader, telehandler, and wheel loader options on that, and again, main colour. Now, we've then got, if we come out of there, the B50 AR05. Now, this one is designed for wheel loader only because it's much bigger, it's a bigger proposition. It's designed for five square bales, but again, you can squeeze in a couple of extras if you're clever about how, you, if you put them on, on on their sides, rather than how they normally sit flat on the floor, if you turn them on their sides. Um, and yeah, with a little bit of careful manipulation, you can get some more in, and we've got some color options on here as well for these. So let's show you those first. So we've got the V-Grab out on the end here. It does have forks at the bottom spikes but what we can do if you want to you can detach spikes and that puts them away so if you're putting these into um, feed mixers that kind of thing you might want to take the spikes off and I will show you why so we come into our bales now if I want to pick all of these I might want to go a little bit higher with my spikes probably want to straighten up a little bit there we go so we get onto there and now we go L1 and grab so it grabs our bales up we go with them all good to go brilliant when we come to drop them off, if I now press, I've got my steel on L1 and triangle, it will drop them, but those bale spikes at the bottom are holding them in place. So if I put that back down, take that out and close that. So if you were putting these into a mixer wagon or you were trying to, I don't know, whatever you were deciding you were going to do with them, if I grab the bales again and pick them up. So if you've got those hovered over something, a shredder or something like that, if I now press drop bales they will drop straight down the front of that without being held by the bale spikes i'm not going to do that for the moment because i need those in a minute i'll do it for a little bit of height so you can see so drop bales and there you go they'll drop right down to the floor brilliant stuff so that's the first one that's the v grab so you see what i mean about the orientation the bales are going to be down like that now these were in a stack of eight so you can yeah you know, like i say you, you get how these bale things work it's not you know but if you're clever or ke not, not clever, clever's the wrong word. If you're careful, that center spar, if you line the, line the center spar up with the center of four sets of bales, watch it not pick them up now. Let me grab, this one doesn't fold, but again, if I press grab bales, up we go. 
and we're good moving around now you can depending on where you grab the bales if I drop the bales now so if I've initially for example come across the first set I don't think it puts all the spikes down I'm just trying to remember now um, so if I do that and we grab them it's got little pressure things I think on the end which read the bales if I grab bales now you notice it puts down those sections of spikes but it doesn't put those on they look like um, velociraptor talons but it doesn't put the end ones down because there's no bales underneath it so you can do it in sections if you want to um, the good thing about that being is they're not all down at the same time so you don't have to drop off the ones you've got to grab new bales you're putting on which is a nice feature now obviously I'm not lined up brilliant on that but if I do that now it's got to give me the option to grab bales or drop bales I haven't got to drop them all then re-grab if I just press grab it will now put those ones down I've grabbed them and away we go happy days um, we have got a, a fair bit of manoeuvrability with these putting them on the ends it's doable if you wanted to put them upright like I say whatever orientation you want to put them in you can I mean, it would be unusual but if I drop bales now so depending on how you want to stack them with a bit of careful manipulation you can get them to work and then the 05 does exactly the same thing comes folded and as I said wheel loader option and you see what I mean about the orientation of the bales? Now I probably could have got another one on the end, so I probably could have done six on this one um, in this orientation. It looks like it's designed for five, but it's... Uh, whatever you want to do. So for quick and easy loading and unloading of trailers, it works really well. Grab bales, and away we go. And with a wheel loader, I found you can't tip it right up at 90 degrees as you can with the telehandler um, but it's a big bit of kit and it will do the job you need drop bales like so so that's the grabs let's move on to the balers i'm going to start this way around we have got three well we've got two balers and a, a pelletizer um so we've got a small round baler we've got the um comprima v180 xc we have got the Big Pack 1290 HDP 2XC, and then we've also got the bale collector that goes on the back of that, and that can do three bales in various different orientations. Now, you don't have to use that bale collector if you don't want to. One of the options on here is just to have the regular back on that for doing square bales if you want. And then we have got the Primos 5000, which is your pelletizing bit of kit. Now, we've got a few different options on these. As you can see, we've also got pallets in this pack. We have got net, we have got twine, and we have got molasses. So if you want to manually reload yours, you can. Um, for the round baler, it takes the net. The square baler takes the twine. And the Primos takes the molasses. Now that's if when you're making pellets, if the product going in is quite dry, it helps bind it together. That also will take water. Um, but you can set them to auto. So if you don't want to mess around with pellets and you just want to run it and run it and run it and not have to worry, you absolutely can. You don't have to worry about doing that. So we'll start off with our balers. So the Comprima V180C, uh, that is eight slots, which comes down to one, 80 horsepower required. Options on this, we've got wheel setup standard or standard two, and you've got manual refill supplies or automatic. I've got both of those on manual just to show you them filling up and the Primos as well. And then I've got a couple of the Primos out in the field, so to speak, um, which won't be, they're just automatic. And you've got license plate option on there as well. Uh, we've then got the Big Pack 1290 HDP to XC 16 slots comes down to one so we've got the bale chute so you can have it as a regular baler or if you want to put the bale collector on the back you put that option on and again manual or automatic if you want and license plate option there too and then the bale collect 1230 slot count on that is four which also comes down to one no options on that you get it just like that we come out from there and we go down to our miscellaneous no our miscellaneous there we go and here we've got the the kiddie of the pack so this is the pelletizing, this will pelletize straw or hay. And there's a bale shredder that comes with this as well. So there's different operations, different ways you can run this. So the Primos is 10 slots and the bale shredder, I think, is 10 slots as well. Um, options on this, this, again, manual refill or automatic, if you want, license plate. That's the only option on that. And the bale shredder just comes like that on a pallet. You don't have to use that if you don't want to, but you can. It's entirely your choice and you'll see with the options that you can use it with why that will become important so come out of there 
But let's start with the Comprima. If we start this up, so this gives me the option, if you've gone for the manual, it says open bail net door. If I do that, it opens the net door at the front. You see there? Bail net. We come up next to our bail net. Let's turn the lights on so we can see a bit better. And it will say refill baler. So that gradually fills up those bail nets. And that's ready to go. Doesn't take a lot. And then I can close bail net door. So that's that one. Done. We'll get that out to the field. We'll get that running in just a moment. I mean, it's a baler. It runs like a baler. You'll, you'll see it doing its thing. Um, but then if you've gone for the manual option, every now and again, you'll have to refill that bail net. If we then go to... I've lost it. There we go. This one's really cool as well. Uh, so this one, lower twine boxes. And the animation on this is phenomenal. So, does that. Now, I was only talking on my Lama video, I, sh I said about the Crone Baler, and because I was aware this was due out, if we now refill, that gradually starts to fill the twine. And it does it on both sides. It will gradually take it from the pallet, and it will gradually fill up those boxes. So while that's filling up, what I'll also do now, if we go into this option, Hang on, not that one, this option. And we go to our objects and we go to our pallets. That's where you'll find the pallets that come as part of this pack. So on the end there. So slot counts on these. The bale twine pallet is four slots. The bale net pallet is three slots. And the molasses pallet is four slots. Not overly expensive. And it just adds that bit of extra immersion. But you've got options on these. So you can either go, let's go right at the back. You can go four pieces... Hang on, four pieces, 44, 40, 36, 32. You can gradually work your way down. So if you have any partial pallets, you don't have to pay the full price. If you're going for the full pallet of 48, 2,980. So that initial pricing is the initial. The bail net pallet, again, 15, 12, 9, 6, 3, back to 15. And then the molasses pallet, 40, 480 litres, 400, 320, 240, 160, 80, and back. So you, you can pick how much you need, how much you think you're going to be using as you go. So what should happen now is, that's taking that entire pallet. Now it does say 72% full, so it's taking that full pallet of 48. It's put them all in, I've got enough to get going. I think it would just fill up that last section if it did. Right, so from there, we then lift the twine boxes, fold them away, put them back up, it's, it's a cracking addition to have. I really like that. If I back up then and get, grab my bale collect. Hook that on. And we'll get that into the field in just a moment. And then if we go to our Primos. Now the Primos doesn't have a bit that needs to be opened. But if I reverse up and come next to the molasses pallet. It should say I need to refill it. It should give me the option to refill. Again, only if you've gone, gone for the manual load. If you haven't, there you go. So that will gradually take that. And that puts the molasses in. But if you look bottom right, it shows molasses and water. So it'll take all that molasses and it will need some water put in as well. I've got a water pipe just over there. So I'm going to put some water in it as well. And we'll get that out to the field to show you that in operation as well. I'll do the field operations. Then we'll get to the the, um, the buildings and we'll, we'll crack on. Like I said, there's a lot to show you on this. It's a brilliant pack. So if you just wanted the balers and the bale grabs and stuff like that, let's get the water in. There we go. Let's get out to the field. I'll see you in there, out there in just a moment. We'll start with the Comprima. We've got barrel size of 125, 150 or 180. I'll put it on 125. Uh, we turn it on, drop it down. We do have the option to turn on or off automatic drop. Pickup's clean, nice and wide. I love the animation with the, the sort of the straw and you'll see as well with the hay dust coming out of it as well almost full there you go 5,000 litres of our straw automatic unload back down again as long as you stop you'll be absolutely fine it doesn't have a pre-chamber or anything like that and away we go you can see the pickup following the ground it does the job now this is part of the pack because it's part of this all chrono gear Let's turn that off um, but be aware um, you can shred these bales, you can put loose in, you'll see with the Primos, the Primos will pick up loose material as well. When we get onto the Primos in its static position, and it has a bale shredder, it's not compatible with round bales. Um, so you might want to shred them first and put them through like this through a pickup, 
um, but yeah it's not compatible round bale so the round baler comes as part of the pack but if you're going to be doing the bale shredding you're probably going to want to use the square baler which is this one over here so with the bale collector on the back if we unfold the bale loader which pulls it in a little bit let's get the lights on. unfold it if i do l1 you'll also notice third one down it says bale unload mode it's got three crosses if i go down one it puts one on the center down again puts two on the outside back again does one in the middle so if i go again puts one in the middle let's turn this on unfold the baler make sure that's good to go let's lower the pickup turn it on I've set it on 180s, this will do 180, 220 or 240s, I'll do 180s. So what should happen, and this is the same again, uh, I think we can do, we do automatic unload? I think it might automatic unload anyway. But the first bale will come out, and with the set on the cross in the middle, it will just do one bale, drop it off. It's going to in the chamber, I'm hoping I've got enough hay. I'm going to say this now, I'm assuming I left it in, that was catastrophic, um, I'm not sure what happened there, just be careful, that's all I can say, that was obviously, I don't know, a perfect storm of circumstances, the entire rig vanished, this is a whole new setup, um, it went up into the sky, it flew and flew and flew and flew, it landed off the map somewhere and everything went black, uh, it didn't crash the game, I swapped vehicle and I was fine, but that's disappeared into the shadow realm. Um, so just be aware of that. We're on, I've gone back again, so I'm on one bale should be coming out. And that should unload once it pops onto there. There you go. So that's where it's set on one. If I now switch that to change bale mode to the two outside, it should do the two outside. And then, you guessed it, the, if you go for the three, it will do all three should do all three uh, now there were some comments left in the discord server on creative mesh on the creative mesh discord um, because people that got this to have a look at early were sort of using it checking it out making their videos and testing it and people were finding if they were going too fast um, with the three bale unload it would unload the two outside ones and the one in the middle slightly separately so you didn't get all three sit on the ground nice and neatly so the advice there is just to slow down a little bit and it should be absolutely fine so this should do the second one to the outside and then put both of those down like that and then i might put some more hay out but this one now we should do hang on let's switch it over should do all three so i'll see you in a moment when it's ready to unload all three and that's when those those grabs come in the um 03 and 05 because you can come along, grab three at a time, load them up onto a trailer because it's unloaded them from here in a nice neat stack already. So bear with me, I'll just get some more hay put out. I thought I'd have enough. And then we'll move on to the Primos. There's our third one, off it drops. And away we go. Animations on this, when it's running. It's all very cool. So there we go. With the bale collect on the back of the big pack 1290 HDP. And as you can see. Oh, it's even done it there. I wasn't even going that fast. It has it put them all off the back at the same time, but it has left this little V formation. So when you come along with your your, your grabs, whichever ones that you might want to just give that a nudge up to neaten it up first. Again, something to be aware of. So over to the Primos. So in its field configuration, and this will do again, this will do straw and it will do hay. You can run it in the field as it is. It will pick up, it will process, and it will make 
pellets. What we can do, if we lower the pickup down the start, we can turn it on. If we unfold the pellet harvester, unfold there, there we go. So we can unfold it or fold it. So if you want to put the ladder up and down, you can, but let's turn on. Now what we can do, we're ready to unload, or if someone runs on side, if you're doing multiplayer, we can put the pipe out. So when you're ready to unload into a trailer, or like I say, if someone's running on side, but well that can be useful later on, you'll see in its static mode, but we'll put that away for the moment. Let's run. So it runs at six-ish miles an hour. As you can see, pellets are already being made. So it's picking them up from the pickup, it's putting them in, it's pressing them, using the molasses in the water and the pellets then coming up and out of the chute here. Now, like I said, these have been put into a trailer. The trailer can go back to one of the halls and you can unload them. So you can unload them in a massive pile and you can use them loose. You can put them in various different buckets and all the sorts of things that you can usually hold them in trailers and stuff like that. You can take them like that or you can take the whole rig back if you want to and unload from the rig. So it depends on which format you want to go with it. So that's in the field use. Now it's an expensive bit of kit. With the bale shredder incorporated um, with it, what a lot of bigger farms, pelletizing companies will do, they'll buy the machine and they will have it static. The baling will get done and the bales get brought back to it. Rather than having it out in the field, it's in one place where it does its job. So what we can do, we can probably unload here actually, if we wanted to. Let me unload, there we go. If you wanted to, you don't have to. Turn the engine off. So that's what a pile of straw pellets will look like. So, I've got another one. Well, another two, actually. We're going to go have a look at static operation, then static operation within a building. I'll show static operation first, then we'll look at the buildings, and then we'll look at it within a building. I hope I'm making sense. So in static mode, and now this is another one of those things, this whole pack, I'm sure people will think of all sorts of ingenious ways of using these bits of kit, of feeding them, but this is just the kit, how it comes. Um, so that's the shredder. The shredder is a separate unit, as I said, on a pallet, and that's your Primos. So what you can do, if you drive along and you want it on the right-hand side as you're driving towards it, you're on the right-hand side, the same side as your pipe, and when you get to about here, that's when it will give you the option to attach and it will change its configuration to attach it hopefully there we go attach it takes that all off and it attaches that on so that's the shredder in place i can just detach it and put it back onto a pallet all good and we can carry on back on the field if we want to if i put that on now now if we unfold the bale shredder that will all come out It's a whole thing. Now, depending on what ground you're on, we've then got options to raise and lower those legs to get them level. So you can get them just where you want them. So leave it like that. L1, I can do the other set with the wheels on the casters. So I can get that level as well. L1, R1. And right stick side to side, we can extend that arm out on the end there. So that's all good to go. Now, if I turn on the pellet harvester, you notice now, with the, the shredder on there, those teeth are on there, and they're there to grab square bales and bring them into the pelletizer. So that's in its static bale shredding configuration. That's how you hook it up. That's how you get it up and running. So what I'll do, I'll grab, I'll just put one. I mean, again, I'm sure people will think of all sorts of ingenious ways of doing this, of loading bales onto it. Um, there are different ways of going about it. What I'm going to do is grab the bales pick them up you might, you might want to do one at a time you might want to do it sometimes you drop that down if I, as soon as I release that it will grab it so if I drop bales like that then go up a little bit and then if I grab the bales again I can, oh, let's grab them all. Let's go up a little bit higher. There we go. So what I can do now, I can let the first one go from underneath, then put the next one on, then the next one, then the next one. Again, one at a time if you want. 
And again, it doesn't got to be Telehanda Skizzy Loader, you know, whatever you want to be loading them up with. Inside one of the halls, we have got a crane in there, so you can actually pick bales up with a crane as well and load them on with that if you want to. It goes fairly slowly, but once you get into the habit of loading them on, um, I think what would be cool would be like for a, a conveyor that would pick up from the ground as well um, that would lead up to that. So you could put a stack of bales, almost like an auto stack that you get on an auto stack trailer that you could put a stack of bales next to it, it'll auto stack them up and put them on. But again, you know, I think it's it's just, it's a fantastic bit of machinery. And then what you'll get is once it starts to shred it in the shredder section just there, you'll see the stuff start to come out, it'll shred it. So I've got there, there we go. So there you go, it's now shredding the bale into there and then it runs through the process. So all that it's doing is bypassing the pickup, which you would have in the field, and it's shredding the bale and the straw is going in that way or hay is going in that way still runs through the same process pellets are coming out pellets are going to the back and they're good to go so that's it in its static configuration loading on square bales now as i said if you try and put a round bale on there it will say round bales are not supported so again just something to be aware of um so if i drop the bales again go up So you can kind of carry on like that if you want. Right, that's it in its static configuration. It's now making pellets, we're all good. Time to move on to the buildings. We have a selection, we have four to choose from of sheds. We'll run through all of them. So if we go first into sheds, we have got the pellet hall. So each one of these is 175,000, which is interesting, it depends what you want. The pellet hall is just a hall, an empty hall, you'll see in just a moment. We've then got Pellet hall crane. So you've got the same hall, but it's got a crane inside. Again, you'll see that in just a moment. And then we've got the bale and pallet storage. That will hold a thousand bales or pallets. That's that one there. Each one of those does have the ability to change colour. Now, I've obviously got the wrong way. 90 degree angles. This is not a full rotation, which might frustrate some people, but that's just the way it is. And if I now go across on my D pad, we can change the colour configuration on the halls. If we then come from the halls, and I go up to production and we scroll across, we will get to these two. So this one here is the pellet hall with palletizer. So that's the full Monty. That's the pellet hall with crane and palletizer for everything you need to do. That would be the full thing I'll go for. Um, again, 175,000. So it doesn't matter which one you go for. If you're gonna go for the full Monty, 175 grand, might as well go with all of it. Um, now, slot count on these were six, six, and five for the sheds. For the, oh, this is six as well. For the palletizing hall, it's six slots. Then next to that, just here, we've got the pellet heating plant. The pellet heating plant is six slots, 42,000. It says there, with your own pellet heat plant, you can use straw pellets and wood chips. So it doesn't do hay pellets, but straw pellets and wood chips to produce heat. Once the bunker is full, it runs for a while and produces heat and income. So like solar panels, those kind of things, it will produce you some income. Um, I think on the hour, is you'll get paid that. If we then come from there and we go to our cell points, you will then see there the pallet cell point, which is this one here, which gives you the pricing. There are other cell points that will take them. I think the buy anything, not the buy anything, the Schultz modding, ones i think the containers do we'll have a look at that in just a second that's only 500 and the sale point is four slots which will also come down to one as you can see just there so let's have a look at the halls then so each one is identical on the outside with a few little changes depending on what you're going to go for so if you just want to use it as a hall you can just inside the door we've got shed lights nice and bright inside we've got two opening doors And then you've got your sections here for storing crops and grains. So if you just want a normal shed or hall or barn or building to store stuff, you can just have that configuration if you want. Next door to that, we've got the one with crane. Same options. The difference is this one's got the crane in it. Um, I'll show you the crane operations in the main hall. But if you've got your icons showing, you enter the vehicle from here. Actually, I'll show you it in here. Let's put the... Um, I mean, I'll show it in the other one as well anyway. But So if we enter the vehicle like so we've got some different angles we can choose from but within these we then can move our camera around so that's that one we've got this one here uh, we can zoom in and out as well which makes life nice and easy um, this is this is the angle i prefer only because under um, l1 
we can toggle the crane tool. So that's your grab for picking up loose material. That's your spikes for grabbing up bales. And that is for grabbing pallets once they've been produced. If we go R1, I've got left stick side side does that and that and that and that. Right stick does that, that and up and down. On all three of them. And then L1, R1 and right stick forward and backward. That opens and closes it. So if I do that and rotate it, and I took it right into the corner, which will become more relevant when we've got the full haul, because that's where your pallets come out right over here. What you'll need to do is open the thing right out to go over the pallets. You then lower the whole thing down over your pallets, close it up, he says, like that, and then you can pick them up and away you go. If I change that again to that and that. Now there's a warning that will come with that. Um, which will become more apparent one, once we've got some pallets being produced. And it is that if you use the bucket, and you've already got pallets produced, if you lower the bucket down over a pallet, it will take the product from in the pallets and put it back into the bucket. So just be careful what implement you are operating with. But that's your crane. Again, we can zoom in and out so you get a more you know, a larger view of what's going on. And that's your crane operation. So you might just decide, you know what? Um, I just want a haul with a crane inside for moving pallets and stuff around. This will pick up, I think it was Dirt Pladactyl in the, in the, in the um, Discord that said just because I was curious if it would work, and it does, it, it did pick up a small tractor. You can't make tractor pallets, but it will, it will pick up a small tractor if you want it to. So it can pick up other things as well. It doesn't have to just be those pellet pallets. You can do anything you like. And then on the end, we've got our bale storage haul for a 1,000 units so this is where our dialog box is there's nothing in at the moment putting in is done there and then out comes out the front once you've got stuff in there so that's your storage building if you want your storage building then we move on to the big dog and this is the one with all of the bells and whistles so Our hall, and let's get our lighting on again, uh, which is just by the door there. Turn on or off. Oh, it was on anyway. So we've got our storage. So if you want to put loose pellets in, you can. And we now know that with the crane, if you use the bucket, you can take loose material from here. If you've gone for this one with the pelletizer, you can take your loose material with your crane, drop it into the pelletizer, and the pelletizer will run. Brilliant. You can bring loose material from the field out of your Primos, and you can bring it with a bucket, telehandler, wheel loader, whatever you like, and just tip it in like that if you want to so you can either do it from crane have it stored in here or you can bring it in by the wheel load at load or by a trailer as long as you've got enough height and you can tip it in there you can tip in and the machine will start operating when we go over here it will give the information um how your output until now how many bags how many pallets how long what you've got in there will last for and what the fill level is that will become again more relevant when we've actually got the machine running now Static operation like that outdoors, that's fine. We can do static operation indoor. So what I'm going to do is back this in. And before I get it into place, and this is one of those sort of slightly important bits, I'm going to open the pipe now. Because if you get it into place, then open the pipe, it'll flip the whole thing over. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so if we get that right out there, Again, this one I've got my um, bale shredder attached. Let me just do that. No, not that. I want to disconnect. There we go, just to get a better angle. Pull my tractor so I'm not in the way. So if I turn that to an angle that way, maybe. Right, so my offload pipe is over the trough. If I now unfold the pellet harvester... No, I don't need to unfold it. I need to go to that. Unfold bale shredder. There we go. So now we've got options with it static inside the building. And there is, is it by Vanquish Zero at one? There's the the um, PTO, like a generator, generator PTO. So you don't have a tractor, you can actually run it off one of those. So that's our bale shredder in place and it's good to go. I could turn that on if I want to, uh, get that going. That's now running, I've got a tractor on inside. So now I've got options. I can bring in bales, I can put them in with a telehandler, skids to load or whatever. I could bring in an entire stack of bales put them here and I can use my crane with the bale grab, pick up the bales, put them onto the bale shredder. I can bring in loose material so I can have it all going on. I can have loose material, one for straw, one for hay, and then, uh, like pellets that is, load them in, 
various different options. Let's get some stuff in and let's get some pallets made, shall we? So what I'll do is bring some of these in and get these running in here. I'll see in a moment when it starts running them and we'll get some straw pellets going through and it, like, it will run straw and hay. I'll just do straw because that's what I've got at the moment. I might bring some hay in just a moment, but let's get that going. I'll try to if I can. Uh, he says. I'll show you putting it on like this and I'll show you with the crane. And I'll show you a couple of different crane functions. You've already seen it, but with a pallet on would make it a little bit more uh, enjoyable to watch. So let's do that. That uh, Drop bales. Now I don't know. I'm, actually, I'm going I'm to leave that because I'm curious to see if when it gets under that bar whether it will push that bale off and drop it back onto the thing or whether it's just going to gum up the works, I'm not too sure. But that will shred, go through the machine, drop into the hopper, hopper from the pipe into the main hopper and then it should start running and we should get some bales going. Now if you've never seen the previous version of this, this machine when this gets running is one of those things that I just get mesmerised watching. The stack turning and all the stuff that goes on is just incredible. There we go, so it's going to do it. So that will pull the bottom bale out. So if you wanted to put a I don't know if you get weighed more because it might tip them but what that might then do hopefully is that will take that that will drop into place and that will go so you could do two at a time potentially I'm going to grab another one in and have a go with the crane I'm just very conscious of time um, it was always going to be a long mod review anyway because there's a lot to show you and apologies if I've missed anything potentially I have and if I have I do apologise and I'm sure there'll be lots of things that people will going to want to try and it's again another mod that once it gets into the hand of the hands of the general population who knows what crazy zany bonkers things people are going to try to see how it works oh, I didn't like that okay that's fine Right, so we have now got some production going. Let's drop the bale there. Let's get out of the way. And you will now see that the straw pellets it's already making are tipping from there into there. They're going up there into the machine, dropping down. Each bag comes in, gets squeezed, sealed, drops onto there, runs along the belt. And then it will turn them depending on what it's going to be doing when it puts them onto the pallet. So it will do an entire stack here, on there. Then it pushes them onto the pallet, drops it down. And then when you've got a full pallet, the full pallet comes out, wraps, comes out, and onto our production line to be grabbed with a forklift truck or whatever it is you want to be doing. That's going to be annoying. So what I'm going to do, hopefully, let's jump into here. Uh, let's change that view swing round go in a little bit let's change that toggle crane tool to that and hopefully uh, let's go with that uh, I'm not sure it's gonna, am I gonna be high enough maybe let's open that up and then drop that down we're about to see aren't we And go that way no. and hopefully open that back out again there we go and that should now run through right so again if you've gone for the bale grab you might want to change your view your angle and you can do it like that if you want to use the bale grab if you're feeling particularly calm and cool and collected Make sure you're above it. Again, ask me how I know. <laughs> Make sure your depth perception is alright and you've got it in the right place. Unload that. We're on. And good to go. So, that's that function. What I'm going to do is move that. And what we'll do is we'll switch that over to that. I'm going to rotate that round. Like that. Open it up. Oh, it was already open, that's cool. Then come over to here, raise it up a little bit. 
and you'll see that once we get our first pallet we can have a go at, <laughs> can have a go at unloading it we'll see how that all pans out we should have enough another bell going in another bell going in and you'll then come over to here and you'll see it all doing its thing the top left so today's output 45 bags no pallets yet there'll be a full pallet in a moment the supply I've got in there will last for 2 minutes and 8 seconds but they're still being filled up and our fill level of straw into the hopper here is coming from there and in. So we should have a full pallet momentarily. Oh we've got one, there we go, so let's hop into here. <laughs> oh, hopefully this is going to work. Apologies if it doesn't. So I think we're right in the corner. Let's drop that down. Please work. Now that's interesting because that did that. I'm right in the corner, I think. There we go. So it's, it doesn't quite go far enough over. Oh, there we go. That's better. Now we close that. Like that. We've got our pallet. Lift it up. Now what you might have at the other door. You might have a waiting trailer that's over here by this door that you want to load up. So you can automatically load up onto a trailer if you want to. In whichever orientation you want onto a trailer. I haven't got a trailer there, but you can if you want to. Drop that down, open it up. We can go and get our next one. So that's the crane operation. That's the pelletizer palletizer, palletizer, palletizing palletizer <laughs> working, doing its thing, let's exit there that is the operation, now obviously I'm doing it with straw but you can do it with hay if you're part way through it will so if I run out of straw now but I was putting some hay in, it will finish off the, pal the pallet with hay but whatever the majority of the pallet is, that's what it will come out with so you won't get a mixed pallet I had it when I was testing this um, and it had, I think the top row was hay, the rest of it was straw, so it, it just puts it out as a straw pallet once it's wrapped. Um, hopefully we'll see one of these wrap. And then what I'll do is I'll take a pallet, we'll take one to sell, and what I'll do is I'll take the pellets that I've got in that Primos there, and we'll take those to the, um, if they were straw, we'll take them to the heating plant and we'll put that on. And that will be everything run, I think. Is that the last one going on? Well, we've got another stack to go. Potentially one more stack. There we go. Full pallet. And wrapped. Good to go. These aren't pick upable by hand. But yeah, again, if you if you don't like using the crane, if you don't want to use the crane, you don't have to. You could just have a forklift here, and you can take these off here with a forklift. I think once this hits three pallets, the machine will stop until you've cleared them. Um, so that's also something to be aware of. You need to start clearing them and get them out of the way. Um, I mean, this was the OG. When you think of all the production chains we've got now, all the pallets stuff, this was the OG. This this started all of that, all the palletized goods and stuff like that. There might have been PC stuff, but on console especially. This, this was the kitty. This was it. Right, let me um, grab something to pick that up. I'll take one to the sell point. Oh, actually, talking of sell points, let's go have a look at our pricing. So we go up to our pricing and we go down. So there you will see your prices for your hay pellets and straw pellets. And as you can see already, the sell everything containers, the train yard here on the map takes them. You've got the pallet sell point, which is the one we put in place. Now, on here, the pallet sell point is paying pretty good i mean compared to the others and the same with our if we go to the other to straw straw yeah again it's more if you put down the straw the um the pallet sell point uh the pellet heat plant that doesn't pay as well but then you haven't got to palletize anything you can just take your pellet straight off there and sell them so what i'll do i wonder if i can pick that up with a fork it's probably best not to i'll grab something to grab that pallet while that's all running what we can do hopefully if I turn it off a second I oh, actually know I've got a better let me just get some more pellets in there and I'll see you at the cell point and the heating plant 
there was this I was going to show you before I move on. I've just suddenly remembered. If I changed my crane tool, and this again, it's just something to be aware of and to be careful of. If you're moving past pallets, especially if, especially if you've got a trailer load, if you've got stuff loaded up, that pallet at the moment should be 2,000 litres of pellets in there. There you go. 2,000 litres of straw pellets. If I enter here and I change that crane tool, you notice already that's got 800 litres in it. That's automatically picked up from that pallet. You have to be so careful. See how I do it? That's so bizarre. I, I it did it a couple of times. There you go. So just be wary of that. Depending on what tool you've got, that's now dumped that everywhere because I didn't close it back up again, but it did grab it. Um, if I exit that now, that pallet should now be saying there 1200 because I took a whole load out um, so just be careful of which tool you're, you're, you're using um, over which thing because I also found I came past one of these with a wheel loader with a bucket on and it started to take it from it automatically I mean, literally just wiped half the thing away and put it into the bucket of the wheel loader so these are quite precarious once they've got some stuff in them Okay, I've got some straw pellets. I need to go around the other way, actually. Um, we go to the heating plant first. Now, remember, this will do straw pellets or wood chip. So, we've got a whole load of wood chip. It doesn't pay mega money, but it will pay out. Pipe out. And we should be able to. And again, this can be done from trailer, and you know, it doesn't have to be from the pipe. There we go. Again, by bucket or anything, it's just because I've got them in here, so it just made more sense to do that. If we go around to the side here, we've got our management production. So, straw pellets or wood chip. So, mess some straw pellets going in, just set that to run. There's no outgoing product because electricity is outgoing product. Um, so, you're not only providing a service for the local community of providing a heating source, but you will then get paid on the hour for that. And if we take out finished products here, to our sell point. There we go. Our harvest income from our pallets of pellets. I'm hoping, I'm just I'm looking at my notes. I think I've covered everything. I hope so. That's it. That's the straw harvest pack or add-on straw harvest, however you want to refer to it, by Creative Mesh. I hope you found this useful and informative in some way shape or form if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do i've got some tidying up to do thanks for watching